everyone, Palitov here, and welcome back to Diablo 4. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys a very quick and concise look at one of the in-game systems that we're all going to get very used to. I'm, of course, talking about the Tree of Whispers. Not only was this a core part of our campaign playthrough, but after you finish the campaign and as you're leveling your characters through the game on your second, third, or 100th playthrough, you're likely going to be interfacing with the Tree of Whispers quite a lot. So what is it? Why do you want to be here? And how can it help you get even stronger? We're here to answer all of that. If you open your map, you'll be able to see a variety of different icons all of the time. These icons have different colors as well. You'll notice these light pink ones have pretty simple tasks to take on. And as a result, they pay out the lowest amount of grim favors. The next step up in difficulty are going to be these kind of light red ones. These give three grim favors. And a lot of the time you can double dip on activities. For instance, killing these enemies at this area would generate quest completion for this as well. What I mean by that is this is a normal public event that players who don't even have the Tree of Whispers unlocked could see here. You guys have likely seen this event while you were just adventuring around the countryside. All we have to do is kill enemies inside these circles to fill up each of the towers with blood. It doesn't take very long to do at all. But you may notice that these enemies are dropping orbs as well. And we have a little bit of a quest tracker for the Pallid Glade. That's just another of the missions inside of this area where I have to collect souls of enemies as they die. So while doing this one, I'm kind of double dipping on another and getting progress for both. The most difficult of the tasks gives five Grim Favors. This can be world bosses or dungeons as well. These dungeons are awesome to clear out because they only take a few minutes if you are moving efficiently, but they give you a lot of progress. Now, in 14 seconds, we're about to see a shift on the map. These Grim Favors do cycle around, so these will disappear very soon, and we will see a brand new cluster of events that we can go do in a another area of the world. And these are going to be up for an hour and a half. I can go start targeting these and then move on to another task after. I uploaded this video without mentioning some of these whispers are in PvP focused areas. And the missions that are PvP focused stay on the map quite a bit longer. You can see eight hours and 40 minutes before these are going to recycle. I believe you can go there and complete those missions without fighting any other players. I did some earlier in my in-game progression. However, if you are a PvPer, you can still use these to get grim favors. You can go there, beat people up, and still get progress here. They made it very easy to participate. My favorite way of getting Grim Favors, though, is definitely doing dungeons. I really like doing these dungeons for a few reasons. Number one, they give you a ton of Grim Favor. Just two dungeons is enough to go collect your reward. But because I am not done with my Renown game at all, I am still unlocking aspects, which you can see here on our Codex of Power. We have plenty more to collect. So as a result of that, I find doing the dungeons extra rewarding because not only am I getting these grim favors i'm also unlocking renown for my entire account and these legendary aspects that i'll be able to craft later now for me personally when i say i'm doing a dungeon for the tree of whispers i don't mean i'm killing every enemy inside it in fact it's usually quite the opposite although you know when life gives you a conduit you might as well i'm trying to get in here find out what the objectives are to move the dungeon along and complete them as fast fast as possible. And this one was very nice because the door to the boss was just unlocked. So I spent maybe three minutes in this dungeon in its entirety so far. Let's go ahead and just unload into this boss as well. And you can see, and this isn't a nightmare dungeon. I'm able to move through even the bosses here very, very quickly. By the way, if you want to see our Twisting Blades Rogue setup, we have several videos on the channel already about this. I'm not really here to kill this boss. I'm not really here to get the loot. The aspect is very nice, but the five Grim Favors in about three minutes is where it's at. Once we've collected all of the Grim Favors that we need, we can return to the tree, and in return for completing its task, 
it will give us a cache. These caches can actually roll up in rarity. It looks like we got all white ones here. I'll go ahead and get rings. As a lot of you know, my friends and I have a movie night we do every Sunday. So this movie night, I was farming grim favors. Uh, I got the whole top row in about two and a half hours, I would say, and then got the collection of rings just now for this video. A big part of determining whether or not you want to do these is going to be deciding if the rewards are right for you. So let's start cracking a few of these open. I would say that was pretty generous. In fact, <laughs> I would say that's not bad at all. You gain access to the system of the Tree of Whispers after you complete the campaign. But once you unlock it, you have it unlocked for your entire account. So you could also take like brand new level 10 characters to go complete world tasks for the tree and then get a cache just like this containing a lot of upgrades for your low level character as well. Oh, that's a top roll. We're keeping that. Now this loot is nice. Don't get me wrong. It is a lot of loot. <laughs> but for your main character, can I even pick all this up again? For your main character, you're really doing this for reasons outside of legendary gear. For instance, in order to start doing nightmare dungeons, you're going to need these sigils. I got all of these sigils in my inventory from opening up boxes. And these sigils are how you're going to really progress your character in the late game. Nightmare dungeons are super fun. And we're going to be releasing a video about these very soon as well. So if you would like to take your character into the late game and start clearing this nightmare dungeon content, one of the best ways of getting started is just to do these events around the map until you can turn those in for a cache at the Tree of Whispers. Not to mention, you're also going to be finding these glyphs for your Paragon board. And don't be like me and just start doing nightmare dungeons expecting your glyph to drop because it won't. <laughs> I would have gotten it so much faster if I just did my tree of whisper content. Of course, your mileage may vary. I feel like I was very unlucky with my glyphs. Some clarifications really fast before we wrap up the video. You are able to craft nightmare sigils later on. You don't have to just keep doing these dailies to get them, but it is a great way of getting your initial set of sigils unlocked so you can start pushing that content. Also, if you drop your difficulty to another world tier, I believe you will get lesser rewards based on difficulty. So you wanna do the hardest content available to you, but also progress is locked between world tiers. So I can't do all of these dailies on world tier one, then swap it to world tier three and expect a big payout. That's not going to happen. And similarly, even though by unlocking this system on our main character, we get it on our alt characters as well, I cannot do quests on my main main and then get the reward cash on my alts. They have to complete those tasks themselves. Yo, I just fact checked myself. I got on my barbarian after doing yet another round of the Tree of Whispers. You can open caches on your alts that you weren't on your main. I had no idea. However, they are very high level compared to me, so your mileage may vary. <laughs> this is a great way of jumping into the end game of Diablo 4, and it will get you started on the path to greatness. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Tried to be short, sweet, and to the point, but if you feel like I missed anything or you want to add anything, that's what the comment section is for down below. I'll see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.